Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Over the last few days, we've seen so much news about one fund, one block trade, and what is going on with Wall Street. It is all centered around this fund. It is Bill Huang's fund. It is former Tiger Cub. Uh, he has started a fund. He did it a few years ago called Archaeos Capital Management, and they are doing forced selling in a few large tech uh, companies, media companies, tech companies, etc. And now we're seeing all over the tape that a lot of Wall Street banks were involved in this. And I wanna give you guys an update on how is this going to affect the entire market, especially because I'm getting questions right now. Is this similar to the Lehman Brothers crisis? Is this similar to the long-term capital management, 1990s big financial crisis? How is this different? How is this similar? How is this going to affect my money in the short term? Are we due for another crisis? Those of you new to my channel, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street trader. Would appreciate if you guys subscribe to the link below, as well as press the like button as well as would appreciate if you uh, recommend my channel on social media to your friends, family, etc. Uh, today, currently, the time is March the 30th. It is Tokyo, Japan time. It is currently 1.36 uh, p.m. JST, meaning that it is currently New York Eastern time. It is still the 29th of March and 11.36 p.m. So let me first give you guys a rundown as to just a quick synopsis and the new news that we've seen over the last 24 hours or so. So guys, basically, uh, those of you who didn't watch my video yesterday, what happened is that uh, there's this fund that's called Archegos Capitals Management. They're a family office fund run by a fund manager named Bill Huang. He's a former uh, Tiger a Management Fund Manager. Tiger uh, Asia Management is a large fund founded by a guy called Julian Robinson, very famous guy. He used to work with George Soros, also a super famous investor. So anyways, super famous fund, then he was at this fund and he decided to start his own fund. This guy's name is Bill Huang. Now, basically what happened was as of Friday, he started to unwind huge positions in some of these big tech companies and media company names and they started crashing some of the notable names include viacom we've seen go down just in three four days 55 percent discovery also gone down about 50 percent or so uh, some other names like farfetch and also iq also these are also crashing as well and it seems like he was using what's called swaps uh, swaps are a type of derivative a derivative instrument is basically something that is not exactly when you want to buy stock but let's say you want to use leverage plus you want to use something that's in between so basically what happens in a swap contract is it's on the right side here where you have basically you say okay I'm gonna give you money let's say to a investment bank say okay I'm gonna give you guys let's say a hundred million dollars and you guys go buy me worth a hundred million dollars worth of stock in discovery or Viacom and wait I want some leverage so I actually want you to go buy me $500 million worth, right? So they use what's called a derivative. And they basically, the investment banking, well, they'll support this structure. They'll give you leverage. It's just like when you and I trade on our own accounts. Our brokerage will give us leverage. They'll give us what's called trading on margin, portfolio margin. Very similar. When a hedge fund does this, when a mutual fund does this, they use what's called a prime broker. It's very similar, except the prime broker usually is focused on the hedge fund community. And they give out much bigger uh, uh, quantities of money, much bigger quantities of leverage. So basically, Bill Huang's fund, they wanted to bet big on a few different stocks and they started going wrong when they realized that they have to sell and get out. And the people that were the banks that were supporting this were Goldman, Morgan Stanley, Credit Suisse, and it sounds like Nomura as well. And because these banks are supporting it, they were the ones that are actually holding the stock. And so when Bill Huang said, okay, I need to sell my swap position, the bank said, uh-oh, okay, that means we actually have to sell the stocks that we own on behalf of Bill Huang. So this is basically what happened and a domino effect is going on right now. Now, what's the new piece of information that came out is that it looks like as of right now, basically as of Friday, a lot of these banks already knew what was going on. Goldman Morgan, Nomura Credit, they kind of knew what was going on and it seemed like they already kind of agreed that, okay, we're not gonna do anything big yet, we'll try to get out of this slowly. And then Goldman and Morgan, it seemed like they sort of jumped the gun and sold a lot of their stock already on Friday or so, or even by Friday, it sounded like they almost got out of all their positions. So it was, it was just a function of speed and they got out quickly. But Credit Suisse and Nomura, the two prime brokers of Archegos, still announced early on Monday that they face losses and they still seems like they have positions in these two stocks. So they are still sitting on 
big losses, as in they haven't gotten out of their positions that they hold in some of these stocks like Viacom and Discovery. So a lot of people are looking at this and saying, oh my God, is this the same as long-term capital management? Is this the same as Lehman Brothers? Now, first guys, uh, I went through the Lehman Brothers crash. I was on Wall Street as a professional. I was working at 1585 Broadway, exactly at the uh, center of all this, right next to the Lehman Brothers headquarters. I had a lot of friends who had uh, worked there. I actually even had an offer there myself. I was, I would say, I would like to think I was near the center of the typhoon experiencing this. Now, <clears throat> first and foremost, the biggest difference between this and Lehman Brothers crash is that the Lehman Brothers crash, the great financial crisis, was caused by subprime loans. What does that mean? Subprime loans are basically meaning that these are loans that are rated at a lower level. This, they're higher risk loans, right? And they're based, a lot of it were based on mortgage loans. So people borrowing money to buy homes and people maybe not with the greatest credit credentials, but they still gave out loans. The banks gave out loans. And then what happens is the investment banks would buy these loans from the banks and they would jumble it together, package it together and say, okay, now we have all these different super high risk loans, but since we combined it all together, it's a diversified portfolio. So now we're going to package it and sell it and put it on our books and say that it's a very low risk loan. Uh, so this basically happened and over and over and over and over until eventually the housing market itself started going down and then the banks had to unwind all these positions and say okay wait this is actually not highly rated oops yeah uh the way we've tried to rate this whole system it's wrong uh moody's you got it wrong s p you got it wrong you guys all got it wrong and then this is what happened and the big difference is that <clears throat> with these subprime loans you can't get out of your position just like that these stocks that we saw today, Viacom Discovery, these are terrible situations. They're big, big moves here, but it's nothing compared to Lehman Brothers because Goldman, Morgan, some of these big banks, they were able to get out fast. And it looks like as of Friday, they had already almost gotten out of everything. So it's a different situation. Subprime loans, you can't get out of these things quickly because a lot of it is done over the phone. It's not done electronically. So this is a big difference here. Not just that, but the market and the size of the subprime loan crash was a much bigger portion of the economy compared to now. Now, the other question I'm getting is, is this similar to long-term capital management? It's similar in a sense in the fact that both of these situations, there's a lot of basically leverage leverage is the reason for this is happening it's not that you know swaps are bad it's not that swaps are dangerous it's not that the banks are doing something wrong it's just the fact that bill huang was using a lot of leverage and too much leverage it doesn't matter whether you're a high school student or you're a multi-billionaire with a iq level of 300 too much is bad it's just it's very simple and he was using too much leverage and long-term capital management was using the same thing in the 1980s they had a uh, actually 1990s they had a debt to equity ratio of 25 to 1 so basically they were leveraged 25 times humongous amount of leverage way too much so if just a little bit of a tick wrong and then you can get wiped out these are very dangerous situations. They're gambling situations. Bill Huang was doing the same thing. And because of that, when the position started just going a little bit wrong, he had to run for the exit. And because of that, according to the contracts that he signed with the investment banks for swaps, the banks had to get out of it as well. Now, what's my overall take? And is this going to really affect the market? Overall, okay, guys, I'm looking at the market right now. I don't think it's going to have a big effect on the market, and this is why. Looking at the markets today, just overall looking at the big indices and looking at the volume here, the Dow today was up 0.32%. It's at an all-time high today. Volume was fine. The S&P 500 ETF today, also just normal volume, no change on the day. NASDAQ itself today, this is the NASDAQ 100 here. Incredible here. This is down 0.03% today. It barely moved today, right? The only stock index that was down a lot was the uh, you know Russell index again but this wasn't on huge volume again so overall guys I'm not seeing any sort of sign of a crash at the moment here uh, the amount of money yes it is big guys but as a portion of the stock market this is still pretty small compared to long-term capital management and Lehman Brothers crisis yes during that crisis maybe the dollar amounts were in the billions or the 10 billions but right now it's not it's very different from 10 years ago or 20 years ago right now the markets much bigger so 20 billion dollars in losses 
it's not that big compared to 20 years ago. 20 years ago, that was a big deal. Today, not as big of a deal. So overall, guys, I don't think you should be worried about this situation. I think you should continue to invest, continue to see the news, continue to learn from this situation, but there's no need to panic and continue to invest the same way that you are investing right now. Thanks again for watching my video, guys. If you enjoyed today's content, please press the like button as well as the subscription button, as well as would very much appreciate, guys, if you recommend my channel on social media, friends, family, etc. Would very much appreciate your support. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great week and talk to you soon.